Am I going to win Big Sugar? Let's face it, probably not. Am I even going to finish? Well, I guess we're going to find out. This is my wife Chloe, and for the last six months she has been riding and training with the help of Humango, an artificial intelligence training platform, to take on the toughest event of her life, Big Sugar. We have flown over the big pond to the birthplace of gravel riding, the USA. More specifically, Bentonville in the state of Arkansas, right in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. The course Chloe and myself are taking on is the 104 mile version with an elevation gain of almost 2,000 meters. We have two checkpoints along the route where we can stock up on food and drink, but other than that, we are heading into the unknown to see if beginner gravel rider Chloe can complete this race, and if so, where on earth will she finish? The Big Sugar is the last event within the Lifetime Grand Prix series and pretty much wraps up the 2023 gravel race season. But with the likes of newly crowned gravel world champion Cassia Nuadoma racing, it's still very much an all guns blazing race. But this video isn't really about me. Head of my first ever gravel race, I do feel nervous just the anticipation of what's to come ahead of us. But yeah, mostly excited. I can't wait to get stuck in. Chloe and I have got two absolutely mega bike setups to use, thanks to the support of the kind people at Lauf and Forge and Bond Wheels. And I'll tell you more about our bikes later on, because seeing as this is an actual race, we need to go and get signed on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rider not fail. <laughs> After signing on, it was time to get our feet up, fuel up our bodies, and get an early night, as the alarms were set for 4.30 a.m. Feeling good? <laughs> I don't know. We're probably like an hour and a half out. Yeah. All we need to do is go get changed, get sorted, last minute toilet stop. Yeah. If I'm gonna need like 10 wee stops. <laughs> Stash our pockets <laughs> full of bars and shells. Yeah. We haven't got anything else to do. No. Smile, be happy, enjoy it. Yeah. Make sure we eat and drink. Yeah. Easy. Sounds easy when we do it like that. Yeah. Just ride. Yeah. What are you feeling? I feel a bit calm. I feel calm now. I felt a bit sick when I first woke up. Rolling up to the start line, you could really feel the atmosphere starting to build. Everyone was getting ready in their pen, trying to find their space. Chloe's rolling the route up. Final prep in terms of who's going where, what's happening. Um, just getting real. I was actually just really looking forward to like starting and just getting on the bike and going. Chloe, we're a few minutes out. We better, we better get on our bikes, get dialed in. We better put our game faces on. Yeah. It's business time. Let's do it. Let's do it. The start of the race was mad. We had a police rollout, which was so exciting. My adrenaline was going, my heart was pumping so fast. All these people around us trying to get in, in position. Alex even made us like ride right up to the front. So we saw the front of the race for a short while. But I was just really excited to get on the gravel and get going.
when we first hit the gravel, it was chaos. There was people everywhere. It was so dusty, you could barely see in front of you. Everyone was trying to find their spot in the race, rocks flying everywhere. I just tried to stay calm, but we were going, we were going pretty fast. We were trying to stay with the front group for as long as we could. Settled in now, clothes tucked in behind me. The hustle and bustle of the race start. It's just starting to fade out. We're lining out into little groups. The sun's coming up. We're here for one hell of a day. So, clothes struggling to eat on the bike. It's pretty tough with all the bits of gravel, change of terrain, the pace. Eating now is what's going to fuel her to the end. I just find it really hard to eat. Yeah. I just, yeah. I've got to be, but I'm not remotely hungry. Force, force feeding food on you is not fun on gravel, but it's good in terms of the actual riding. What's the atmosphere? What's the vibe? feelings. Yeah. Amazing, everyone's really happy and supportive. Yeah. And uh, yeah, gravel's really good. I don't mind climbs like this. A bit gradual. Yeah. Not too gravelly. So there's ones back there that were like steep, but like really like thick gravel that you can't really get a proper line in. Yeah. I struggle with. Wow. This one's pretty much over now. Nice little downhill. One of our major climbs of the day, I think that was. But at least it looks it on the profile. One hour, 45 minutes down. Or in, you know what I mean. Hello, first hey, speed. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rack bikes up. Yeah, that actually went way quicker than I thought. <laughs> You've got so much dust on your nose. <laughs> it's gravel. Having reached the first checkpoint, we headed off to restock our supplies for the miles ahead. And while I do that, let me tell you a little bit more about our bikes. So we're using the Seaglut from Lauf, which is an Icelandic brand, and they've been in the game of making gravel bikes pretty much ever since gravel has been a thing. And what kicked that all off was this absolutely nuts looking fork. It's called the Grit. This is actually the third generation of the fork, and it provides around 30 millimeters of vibration absorbing travel and suspension at the front of your bike. Lauf say this design is ideal for the high frequency vibrations that you get when you're riding over gravel. Not only is it helping improve the comfort that you get, they also say it's gonna speed you up and increase the traction too. Comfort and compliance is a theme which Lauf continue through the frame and up at the handlebars with something called ICE. This stands for Integrated Compliance Engineering, in case you didn't speak Lauf. Um, they say their smoothie handlebar offers twice the compliance as what other carbon handlebars do. And then at the seat tube there at the back, the ICE that's implemented there is allowing for up to 15 millimeters of flex and compliance under full load when you're going over the rough stuff. Now, following on with that idea that making your bike comfortable and compliant helps make it faster, the guys at Forge and Bond have hooked us up with their 25 GR wheels. Now, the way that they're going around approaching the idea of comfort and compliance for speed is through their fusion fiber technology in the carbon fiber wheels. Not only is it gonna help speed us up, but it also has an environmental impact too, because it uses long chain nylon polymers instead of the traditional epoxies and resins which are used in your traditional carbon fiber manufacturing. Forge and Bond say this allows the wheels to absorb impacts through microscopic flexing in those carbon fibers. It also means that when these wheels come to the end of their usable life, they can then be recycled into new forged carbon fiber parts, not just once, but multiple times over. Unfortunately, 
They can't be recycled into a brand new set of wheel rims though. Now, I know I've only briefly spoken about some of the setup of our bikes. We've also got some bags holding all our snacks and spares, big water bottles so that we don't get dehydrated and thirsty. But there are far more exciting details and bits of information and tech to go through. So much so that over on the GCN Tech channel, I'm gonna have a video where I go into a full deep dive on the whole kit and the setup that is hopefully gonna allow us to get to the finish line. Um, so go and check that out. Coming up to the first feed zone at mile 38, I was actually feeling really good. The time had gone really quick, quicker than I was expecting, which gave me a bit of a morale boost. We were riding pretty like hard in some bits and I was like, I need to just chill this out. Alex had been telling me, reminding me to keep eating. I was kind of struggling already at that point to get enough food down. I'm really trying to eat. Bring it back to me, it's my only just, one. Once you're done, I feel you. good. I just, <laughs> the eating is making me feel I? sick. Well, I don't know if that makes any sense, Shuttle. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not hungry, there, which I guess is a good thing. And I'm having to eat every half hour, hour but try to see if I can access I'm just really here. trying to force food, um, food down you is not very thing, nice. It's the same thing. And I'm I trying to have something savory. Well, banana and I've got some Doritos. I'm trying to drink some water. Let me just see. Oh, yeah, you because when we get back on the bike, it'll be bars, chews, gels, so. All quite sweet. It all jumbles but... together in my brain. <sighs> just right, trying to take so my time shuttle. and not rush. I think if I rush, it's going to make it worse. Just, I, I just wasn't feeling hungry, but I knew how important it was. So I was looking forward to having a bit of a break from the bike, having something savoury, just taking a minute to reset. Feed zone one completed, on to the next. prize for best jersey of the race. Thanks. <laughs> That's a big one. Good job. The first few miles after the feed zone, we were on a real high and feeling really good. But that feeling was short-lived. Hello? I just, I just, I literally just feel sick. What's wrong with me? Like I'm making a drama over nothing here. Yeah. Just struggling to eat. Well, that's okay. It's just one of these things to overcome. Mm. Right, we can just keep chipping away. Eating, I can't. Yeah, it's hot. But I'm trying to be positive. Halfway. But yeah, I can't lie. I'm finding it a little bit difficult. What I've learned from this race is that there's going to be lots of highs and lots of lows. And that's the same for everyone. I think having the support of Alex really helped me to bounce back from my lows. We're smashing it so far, Chloe. We're at the stage where like everyone's gonna find it tough. Yeah. Don't don't think that it's just you find it tough, everyone is. That's true. Everyone's so nice, aren't they? And friendly and everyone's like, put a brave face on it. We stopped just that there to have something to be and everyone's like, you're right, do you need anything? So Yeah. That's good. So as we start, as I started to bounce back, we actually made up loads of good time on a load of the sections. And we actually we took loads of people. We were on a roll. Don't tell me we've got right back up there. Until progress was halted. I did curse it. I've got a puncture. Well, I guess that's where it is. You able to take it yeah. Just gotta find it. 
There he is. Yeah. We're back in the game. With over five months worth of training complete, the hard work was done, but there's still time for some last minute tips and advice for Chloe from none other than current gravel world champion, Cassia Nefiadoma. I think that, um, yeah, there's no point of stressing because okay. I feel like everyone comes here just like wanting to experience yeah. the gravel scene, uh, me included. I just want to soak it up. And I feel like definitely you want to make sure that after the finish line, you feel like, oh, I gave my best, yeah. whether it's like, for 10th or 50th or 150th yeah. position, whatever. But as long as you know that you had fun and you gave your best, I feel like it's the biggest achievement. Yeah. And also I would say that, you know, crashing or puncturing is a part of the game and... That does worry me a bit, but <laughs> you know, crashing. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, like we all crash so many yeah. times and at the end of the day, you have a cool story to tell, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> it might hurt, but then it's, it's not a big de yeah. deal, you know? Have you felt better than since the last stop? Mm. I did struggle for a bit after that. Um, but then, yeah, then like got through it and came around. And I've been feeling really good the last, last like hour and a half. Right, we've got this, come on. Ooh. some incredible views. Look at that. Open stuff. So open. Absolutely beautiful. We are genuinely flying. We've come out of the second feed zone in good shape. Chloe's gone through a bad patch. We're on a good run again now. So make hay while the sun shines, as they say. Rolling out of the second feed with 30 miles to go, and it was at this point that I think it both clicked and we were like, we're, we're gonna do this and we're gonna finish strong. We'd actually ridden really smart the whole race. We hadn't started off too fast or too hard. We'd preserved enough energy to make sure that we were gonna enjoy the last bit of the race. Maybe for the last time. She won't know I'm saying this, but she's so much better than she ever will realize. How do you get someone to realise they're quite good at cycling? I don't know. To be dancing up in the air Will you hold my hand when we fall? I don't think I dare The secret racer inbuilt in Chloe is starting to come out now. 15 miles. No, 12 miles to go. And Chloe's going, come on, more. Let's go faster. Push on. I think we're gonna get this thing done in under seven hours. Come on, let's do this.
Coming into the finish straight, it just suddenly hit me that like we'd done it together. I was just really proud of myself. And I was just feeling really grateful to have this opportunity to, to do this. It was incredible. And having Alex by my side was like an amazing feeling. There's not many people that could say they could do that with their other half. And, and it was, you know, really also down to Alex that got me to the finish. I couldn't have done it without him. I was feeling really emotional. I feel like we've truly captured the spirit of Grab. Yeah, the spirit of Grab is like, well, like literally it's for anyone. Anyone can do it. You can ride anything, like any age. There was people on tandems, people on single speeds. Yeah. So all in all, 104 miles, seven hours, one puncture, a few shed tears, but we had a smile on our face the whole we way around. We enjoyed it, like, I, we took it in. Right, and on that note, Huge thanks to everyone that we saw out on the course, the shouted, cheered. I hope everyone's had a brilliant day. And big shout out to the support we've had from Lau, Forge and Bond, and Humango for keeping us fit, strong and healthy. Again, us under that sub seven hour mark. Got us to, got us to this point. If you want to see uh, more details about our bikes, kit and all the setup, head over to GCN Tech. But otherwise, please let us know in the comments section down below. And please, like, if you're thinking about doing a challenge, if you're thinking of pushing yourself out your comfort zone, like, do it, please. And let me know. Yeah, let em, share it in the comments how proud everyone is of her. Right, we're going to go get a beer. <laughs> I love you. All right, well, you get all the attention. One more round of applause. Chloe Pack.